Hey, how you guys doing out there? You know who it is. Madman here. Starts right. Madman is back home. Matter of fact, I got back home on Sunday. And oh hell, was that, uh, was that tiring, that plane trip. And I'll, I'll go into uh, why and all that kind of stuff. But uh, let's get started, shall we? Got to get the essential amino acids, and vitamins, and nutrients, and uh, the protein, and you know PBR is the best bet. I'm just fucking around, but uh, yeah, my head is still scrambled to be honest with you guys. So just bear with me on this one, all right? So what this video is going to be about? This is going to be one video in a series of four altogether. Uh, the video I'm covering tonight is just an overview of my weekend in Vegas. Viva Las Vegas! Viva Las Vegas! That's right. This is going to be an overview. It's going to cover from Thursday, you know, to like Sunday, you know, and going home and the whole thing like that. So let's get into this. Oh, again, let me, let me give you guys some warning. I'm still not completely adjusted and acclimated to being back home, and I've got a lot of things uh, to do, so my head's all over the place, and I'm still trying to get adjusted and get back into the routine. You dig? So I might ramble on a little bit or get a little confused, but uh, we'll, we'll get through this one. Okay, first off, let me say Viva Las Vegas was one hell of an experience, Viva 21 was a hell of an experience. It was my very first Viva. I'd never been out there before. I had been to Vegas back in high school, like 2003, my ninth grade year, but I never got to make it out for a Viva Las Vegas. And I must say, it did not disappoint, even in the slightest. Also, before I go any farther, I want to uh, make a note. Thanks to Big Bird, without him, this wouldn't have been possible. So thank you, brother. Loved meeting up with you again after six years. It's been over six years since I've seen him, so it was really great to get back and hang out with Big Bird. We kind of rolled right back into the old routine, just like it used to be, always fucking around, always being goofy and having fun, and just kind of exploring, going on little adventures, and, and just seeing what's out there, you know? So uh, I had a great time. We had a lot of laughs. And uh, thanks again, brother. Also, since I'm speaking about Big Bird, if uh, you don't follow him, you can go ahead and click on the link in the description below. I'm going to put his Instagram because he's got a lot of pictures and videos from his perspective. And a lot of the pictures and videos you're going to be seeing in this video and then the little series of videos that I do covering each day are, are uh, compliments of Big Bird. You know, pictures he took or some videos he took. They're going to be in some of these clips. You dig? Also, if you don't follow my Instagram or Facebook fan page, the links are in the description below. Go give them a click so you don't miss out on what I'm up to and the things that I'm doing. Dig it. Okay, I gotta make another note. Now, I know that I'd said I was gonna do some live streaming. I'd be uploading, you know, to uh, you know my Instagram and Facebook fan page and all that kind of stuff. Sadly, that did not happen, and I will tell you why. When I got out there, I had a lot of data and Wi-Fi connection issues. It was very hard to find stable Wi-Fi that I could do anything with. And uh, my data just did not cover me out there. I think I had enough just to make some phone calls. And that was pretty much it. We didn't even get the Wi-Fi for the motel uh, until the day after because we had gotten in to the motel and then the office had closed maybe 30 minutes after and uh, we needed to get the Wi-Fi code, so I finally had to wait till the morning when they opened to go get it. But even with that, it was very spotty, it was very shitty, and I could hardly do anything with it. So, with that being said, I was not able to set up any meetup points. I wasn't able to let you guys know where I was going to be, what I was going to be doing at whatever time. So, for those that I did not get to meet, that were there, and I know there's quite a few of you... I'm sorry that uh, we had the issues and weren't able to set the meetups. I mean, the show itself is huge. I mean, it's thrown at the Orleans, and there's just so much going on. There's so many people. I mean, the crowds were just insane. I mean, on Thursday night when uh, Big Bird and I walked into the Orleans to go get our wristbands, 
And uh, speaking of wristbands, let me go ahead and show you. Wristband. Yeah, I still got it. <laughs> I had to save it. But uh, it was uh, it was overwhelming, to say the least. I was like, whoa, shit, man. Look, there's, like, there's got to be like a million people in here. Man, where do we go? What do we do? You know what I mean? <laughs> I was confused. I was like taken aback and like breathless. Oh, shit. But uh, even though I didn't get to meet the majority of you, I did get to meet a handful of really, really cool cats, uh, friends of mine, and, you know, some people that I know, and then uh, supporters and followers of the channel. So for those I got to meet, and I'm going to have your pictures posted here and the whole thing, thank you so much. It was nothing but love on your guys' end, nothing but love on my end. I really appreciate the support and the kind words. And uh, I had a hell of a time talking and hanging out with each and every one of you. And hopefully next year, if I'm able to do it again, hopefully more people will be there. And I'll actually be able to set it up right this time and be able to meet up with a ton of you. Because I really, really had a lot of fun and it was really great uh, meeting you guys and just doing the damn thing, you know. So again, thank you for your support. It's much appreciated. And uh, I hope I see you guys again uh, next year for that. Dig it? All right, so let me start with a little overview here. You know, I got in on Thursday. Uh, got lost in the airport in McCarran Airport for a bit because this shit was huge. There's like escalators going halfway down. One's going all the way the fuck up. This one going down all the way. It was all over the place. So finally, I got out of the airport. Uh, and then Big Bird and I, we hit the road. And then we got stuck in traffic. So uh, you'll be able to see some of those clips. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> We finally pull up to the motel, and it was in the ghettoest area of, like, Fremont Street. And I swear, it was like this this scene almost from, like, one of those travel movies or something where they're on the road, and they think that they're going to be staying at this luxurious or, or halfway decent motel. And then they roll up to it, and it's like you hear the, the banjos. Da -dang, ding, 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 ding. You see a tumbleweed go by. <laughs> We rolled up in front of it. Big Bird goes, what the hell is this shit? This shit's ghetto. And we just start laughing. He's like, fuck this, bro. He's like, fuck this, dude. I don't know if I want to go in here. What do you think? You think we should go find somewhere else? I'm like, fuck it, dude. The rooms are already booked. Let's just go in and, and check in, man. So we go in and uh, we get all the paperwork sorted. And then uh, the guy behind the desk hands us a key. And I'm not talking a key card. Now, key cards have been around in Vegas since I was a kid. And uh, hands us the key. And we're like, oh, shit. What did we get ourselves into? <laughs> yeah. So we go. We open the door. We go in. The room wasn't bad. It was halfway decent. I mean, it had, you know, pretty much all the amenities. And, you know, it wasn't a real bad room or anything. So that was fun. It was a no-smoking room, so we had to smoke outside. And you'll hear me blabber on about that in some of my little vlogs. So we get in there, and then uh, after that, we kind of figure out what we're going to go do. We went got some Taco Bell, and then uh, we headed over to the Orleans, and uh, we got our wristbands and did some drinking and some gambling, and that's where uh, we met up with uh, some of the, the supporters and friends from the channel. So it was really cool to see you guys. Thank you very much. Loved meeting you. And uh, it, was, it was funny. Now, I've never been much of a gambler. Uh, neither is Big Bird, you know, we, we've never been really big gambling people or anything like that, so we're just playing like the dollar or the 25 cent slot, you know, slots and stuff like that. Big Bird puts a dollar in and fucking hits the thing and hits a jackpot. One dollar and he got 125 off of that dollar. I was like, damn! <laughs> so he got a nice little paid, oh, oh man, indigestion. Uh, but he got a nice little payday out of that and that was really cool. We, he's got pictures of it and videos and all that cool shit. So again, check out his Instagram. But then, of course, uh, you know, we did a little bit of that. Uh, you know, got some pizza, had some more beer, and then you know we ended up getting back to the uh, the motel, and we didn't get in real late or anything like that, and got some sleep. Woke up the next day, and then we started doing our thing, and uh, we kind of just hung out for a bit just to kind of wake up. You know, I was still pretty tired out, and I had jet lag, so. I was still kind of dealing with that. And you guys will see when I post day two's video, you'll see kind of some of the stuff we got up to, all the fun and goofy behind-the-scenes shit. But uh, day two is pretty cool. We ended up, uh, let's see, we ended up going over to, yeah, we, we ended up going to In-N-Out Burger, which I had not had In-N-Out Burger, again, in like over six years. 
So it was really nice to get a, a nice big bite out of a double-double fries and a shake. I was like, damn, I love this shit. It was great. And then we went over to the Orleans to because they were setting up for the car show. So everybody was bringing their cars in, and we got to go see some of the cars, and the, the vendors were setting up their booths. And then, of course, the stage was being set up, and every you know you got the crew out there working and tuning up guitars and amps and, and figuring out the sign for the Stray Cats you know, to come up. And So we got to uh, do a little bit of that and got to hang out and watch some of the behind-the-scenes stuff with that. And... Uh, Let's see, yeah, we ended up doing the Tiki Lounge, Frankie's Tiki Lounge, which was a lot of fun. And uh, we had a good time with that. And then later that night, this would be Friday I'm talking about, we had the show on Fremont Street, downtown in the Fremont Street area, where we saw the Polecats, the Quakes, and Guanabats play that night. That was a lot of fun. I had a great time with that. That was a very intense show. They all kicked ass. I mean, we were literally stood shoulder to shoulder and back to back with, like, uh, the guitar player, singer from the, the Quakes was behind us, and then, uh, you know, the original guitar player for the Polecats was in front of us, and <laughs> we were, like, around all these guys that we grew up listening to, so that was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, the Polecats and the Quakes and Guanabats, they did not disappoint. The pit was awesome. Of course, I had to jump in the pit. You know, I hadn't pitted in, like, eight years or something like that. So it was pretty cool to get in the pit and do it and have fun. And uh, one of the guys who watches the channel and he supports, he loves the channel, he got here, Madman! And he come up and I see him, hey, what's up, dude? He's like, hey, take a picture. All right, let's take a picture. You know, we took a picture and everything. And then, uh, you know, the pit was still going. And then I jumped in the pit and I saw him on the sidelines. So I pulled him and said, let's go. We're like fucking just going and having a great time. And there'll be clips of that, you know, with the polecats and the quakes and stuff. And then the pit. That was a lot of fun. That was a big highlight for me. And uh, let's see. After that, we ended up just going back to the uh, the motel to get some sleep to start off. Drum roll. Brrr, Saturday with Dwayne, Eddie, Jerry Lee Lewis, and the Stray Cats. You know, so uh, Saturday rolls around. We were damn, you know, Big Bird and I were really tired out from uh, Friday night and all the, you know, the big show and stuff we were at. So we were pretty tired and we were lagging it big time. And just kind of trying to get our steam and have a few beers and all that kind of stuff. And just kind of figure out what we're going to do, when we want to go. So we headed out a little bit late to the car show. And we got there. Of course, we hit up the vendors immediately. We started checking out all the, all the tents and seeing what was there. And got lots of pictures and videos of that as well. So that will be on day three's video. And, uh, you know, I was able to get some really cool merch while I was there. And I'll show you what I got was able to pick up a few things for Rock and Roll Joker. Now, Rock and Roll Joker was covering uh, the festival, or yeah, yeah, the festival of vintage in the UK. So she was doing that while I was out at Viva, and I picked her up a cool, I had to pick her up some trinkets while I was there. So I got this uh, Viva Las Vegas, I think it's the uh, number 19 shirt, is really cool. Got her that, and then of course, uh, I got her this uh, London Rock and Roll stage show, so it has a whole bunch of old school, uh, you know, singers and bands and stuff on it, and then uh, I got her a pack of the uh, <coughs> Viva Las Vegas playing cards from 2016, so that'd be, I think, Viva 19, so it's like, you know, you got the uh, official Viva playing cards, which are just really fucking cool, and then also uh, I got some, some CDs, oh, come on. Making a mess over here. I got myself a pack of the playing cards as well. And uh, picked up some CDs. Ended up getting uh, the Rockettes rocking together. You, know, you, see, you can see that. There we go. And then, uh, oh yeah, Big Bird gave me uh, Brian Setzer Orchestra. And he gave me uh, Royal Crown Review, so that was really cool. And then I also picked up the Viva Las Vegas Rockabilly Weekend number nine. And, uh, you know, they had some really good deals going on for discounted merch. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to do that. So then after <clears throat> after we did that, we uh, we knew that Dwayne Eddy was setting up. So we went to see him. And I must say, holy shit, that was truly awesome. I had a great time watching Dwayne Eddy. That guy is a class act. And that old man can still play a hell of a guitar, you know. He was funny, 
he gave little stories and descriptions about the songs when they came out, what was going on. And I got a lot of that, that footage covered, so I'm going to show you guys a lot of that stuff. And that was a lot of fun, I must say. And I enjoyed watching Dwayne Eddy. I mean, grew up listening to him, still listen to him. And, I mean, it just sounded amazing. He put on a hell of a show. After that, we, uh, we were out in the sun. I mean, it was like 85, and we were baking out there. Thank God we had the, uh, like the sunscreen on and stuff, and I brought a hat with me. And, uh, but we were still baking, and we were drinking water and stuff, trying to stay hydrated. So we ended up going back to the parking garage, sit in the car for a bit, uh, drink a little bit, have some, some more fluids, just kind of rest, get out of that heat. And uh, then we went back in to get some lunch, and uh, I think we got another beer or something like that. And by the time we got back, we had missed Jerry Lee Lewis. So sadly, I didn't get to see Jerry Lee Lewis, but I heard he put on a good show, but it was kind of tough for him. Uh, they have footage, I know, on YouTube, so you guys can type it in Viva 21, Viva Las Vegas 21, Jerry Lee Lewis. They have plenty of footage up to see. Sadly, I don't have any of that footage. So after that, uh, we had missed that, and they were getting ready to start setting up for the, uh, you know, the uh, Stray Cats. And so we went and checked out some more of the cars and some more of the vendors, just kind of looking around where they were setting up for that. On our way to go get a spot at the Stray Cat show, because you, know, you had like the bleachers in the back and then everything else was standing, we wanted to try to get at least a decent position to get into the crowd and so we could get some good videos and pictures. And the cool thing is, I got to meet Vince Ray. And if you cats don't know who Vince Ray is, he's a legendary artist from the UK. He's the one that does all the posters and the artwork for Viva Las Vegas. you got to imagine this. To me, as an artist, that's an honor. It's an honor to meet somebody like that, a legendary figure that's been doing this for a very long time. I mean, you got to figure, when I was in high school, I used to get the posters uh, you know, from the different Viva Las Vegas events, and they used to line my walls in my bedroom. So it was really, really cool to shake hands with uh, Vince Ray and get to talk to him for a couple of minutes. Sadly, I did not get to get a picture with him because he was behind the booth and he was working, and I didn't want to take up too much of his time. Plus, we were on our way to go see the Stray Cats and wanted to make sure we got uh, at least a good spot so we could see the show. So again, uh, thank you, Vince Ray, for taking some time to talk to me. I really enjoyed talking with you, and uh, I really dig your work. So now we're on to the Stray Cats, and holy shit, they did not disappoint. I must say, it is one thing to watch the live DVDs. It's one thing to listen to them with headphones blasting, but it is a whole nother ball game seeing them live. Those guys are as professional as professional gets. I mean, you know, they got their roadies who are you know, have all of their mics ready to go, everything's all customized, their guitars and bass and drums, everything's set up, I mean, everything's tilted to the right angle and moved this way and dialed in like this, I mean, those guys were just, they sounded so clean, and holy hell did they put a show on, I mean, they hadn't played in like, what, 10 years? So Viva was their comeback show all together, and they just dropped right back into it like they'd never stopped playing together. And man, they brought it down. And they played with so much intensity. And you guys will see some of that, some of the clips that we got between me and Big Bird of uh, the Stray Cats playing. Those guys did not disappoint. And they just, they slaughtered the whole thing. I mean, they slaughtered that stage. It was amazing. You could feel the bass hitting you in the chest and the drums in your feet and the guitar just ringing your ears. And it was just... A lot of intensity. They had the, the showmanship, the music, and the raw intensity, and they just made that the you know the rockabilly thing just so cool to be around. I loved it. It's something I'll never forget, ever. And then of course, on our way back, we go by the uh, the official Viva booth, and uh, lo and behold, guess who I see sitting on the table? Somebody else that I really wanted to meet. Just sitting there hanging out, not really doing a whole lot, just taking a quick break. Tom Ingram. And if you guys don't know who Tom Ingram is, he's the one that puts the Viva Las Vegas show on. This guy is a Revival era guy from the UK who was running shows in London and brought a lot of our rockabilly artists that were kind of just thrown to the side, you know, in like the 70s and the 80s when everybody else was listening to all the hippie stuff and the, the metal and, you know, the new upcoming metal and the punk rock and stuff was, was coming around. And the rockabilly artists weren't really doing a lot here in America. And they said, hell, 
we love this music over here, and they were bringing them over. Tom Ingram was one of those people. He was a promoter and DJ. He's the one that puts Viva on, and I was really ecstatic to meet him. So I got to walk up to him, shake his hand. I got to take a picture with Tom Ingram, and so didn't Big Bird. Uh, I think he's going to have that posted on his Instagram. Um, it was really cool to spend time shaking his hand, just talking with him for a few minutes. I know he's a very busy guy, so I didn't want to take up too much time. And uh, I want to say thank you, Tom, for putting the show on. Thanks for keeping Rockabilly alive. Thanks for uh, always, you know, always doing something bigger and better and more for, you know, the whole Rockabilly scene. And, uh, again, it was really cool to meet a legendary figure. And uh, thanks again for your time. Much appreciation. Again, legend. And then after that, we went back and uh, um, cooled off a bit. I changed shirts, went back into the Orleans, had some more beer, did a little more gambling, didn't win shit. <laughs> you know, had some more food and everything, and just kind of hung out. And then after that, I think we went over to another Tiki Lounge, had a couple of drinks, and then, uh, you know, we're back off to the motel because here's the thing. My flight took off at 7 in the morning, so I needed to be at McCarran Airport at least by 5. So I, you know, could get through, get, you know, checked in, get through security, find my gate and the whole thing. And, uh, sadly, I had not gotten any sleep because we were out all night, you know, it was, we were just jam-packed. And I knew if I went to sleep, I wasn't going to get up in time. So, uh, <laughs> I stayed up to the whole thing, ended up getting on the flight. And I mean, I was so dead tired. I mean, I'm like passing out on the plane, but I'm not passing out completely because I can't, I can't relax on the plane. Because it's so cramped and my, my knees hurt, my feet hurt. And there's too many people around me and I'm cramped in and uncomfortable. So I'm like trying to fall asleep and I keep waking up. And that was just agony for like, you know, three and a half hours. I was like, oh. And I'm back. Oh, shit. Where am I? Oh. I'm like struggling to like see and everything's like crisscrossing. I'm like, oh, shit. And then I finally landed and then I uh, had to come home. <laughs> and I had to go right to work and start teaching class. But uh, that was a hell of a day, hell of an experience, hell of a weekend. And I've had some people ask me, what was the big highlight of the weekend? And, uh, you know, besides getting to see Big Bird after six years and hanging out with him and just getting back into the old swing of things and having a good time, you know, hanging out with my old buddy, you know, beside that, I would say, you know, seeing the Quakes and the Polecats, Guanabats, and, of course, uh, Dwayne Eddy and Stray Cats was very big. I love that. The, uh, meeting uh, supporters and fans of the channel, that was really, really cool. I enjoyed the hell out of that. That was another highlight. And then, uh, you know, meeting Vince Ray and Tom Ingram was another huge, uh, huge highlight. I mean, that's that was really cool. That made me very happy, and it still brings a big smile to my face, and I enjoy the hell out of it. Now, to get into this segment of it, why Viva? Why go to Viva? Because Viva has something for everybody. I mean, this is the official program. For Viva 21, look how thick this is. I mean, this is full of ads and, and pages of things you can do, places you can go, companies, uh, all kinds of stuff, shirts, dresses, clothing, uh, various bands that are playing, where they're going to be playing at. I mean, and the cool thing is this. It doesn't matter what you're into specifically. They have something for everybody, and they keep building it every year. I kind of, like, wonder how many more years is it going to go where they're going to say, hey, we're going to have to start splitting this up into multiple shows because there's just so much going on. I mean, here's the cool thing. You're going to see everybody represented there. You, you know, we saw people from Germany, Denmark, Japan, China, um, you know, Mexico, Brazil, the UK, all over different states. I mean, and everybody was all there for one common thing, for the love of the rockabilly, greaser, vintage scene. Everybody had a great time and everybody's all there getting along and having fun with each other and that's what it's about. That right there. So what kind of things could you do in Viva? Well, if we've got about an hour I can tell you, but no, seriously, I'm going to try to break it down pretty quick here. The things that you can do in Viva, they've got everything. If you're, if you're a car guy, they've got the cars. They've got every kind of, they've got gassers, bombs, Dead sleds, uh, hot rods, rat rods, classics. You know, you name it, they got it. They got all the kind of cars you can imagine there. Tons of cars. Uh, if you're into the music, 
they've got the headlining bands, and then they've got all these other bands throughout the country and throughout the world. You get bands from Germany and the UK coming over, you know, and Brazil, and, and you know, there's all kinds of bands. There's, there's tons of music to be heard there. Hey, you guys want to get a nice haircut while you're there? Well, guess what? Suavecito had their big, uh, their big travel trailer opened up, and they're giving haircuts. Oh, shit. There was barbers there with tents, you know, with the tents, and they're giving haircuts. You want to get a haircut? Boom, no problem. Hey, you want to get married there? Guess what? They got a, they got a, a marriage service right there. They got the preacher and a whole bit, and they'll get you married. You want to get hitched? Boom, get hitched. You can do it there. If you like to collect pomades and you want to know about new upcoming companies, guess what? There's like thousands, millions of cans of pomade everywhere. You can find it all over the place. There's all kinds of stuff. If you're into clothing, shit, they got you covered. You can get anything from dresses, shoes, shirts, uh, hats, boots, uh, everything from formal to jeans to you name it, it's there. You want to get buttons, patches, stickers, posters, shirts? Guess what? You can do that. I got two stickers right here. I got the moon eyes, and I got this really cool Jessica Rabbit with a pompadour and a, and a bandana around her head. I had to get a couple pins. You know me. Come on. Hey, you like to bowl? You want to do a bowling tournament? No problem. They got it. Hey, you guys want to get tattoos from some of the leading tattoo artists in the world? <laughs> Boom. They got you covered. Tattoos galore. You like burlesque shows? They do that too. Guess what? Elvira was uh, doing the. I think, no, I think she was doing the. Was it the pinup contest or the burlesque show? She was a judge there. And if you guys don't know who Elvira is, type it in. You you'll thank me later. But um, they've got pinup contests, burlesque shows, uh, you know, tiki lounges, pool parties. They've got something going on everywhere. And honestly, I think Viva is one of those things you've got to go to for at least ten years to kind of get a little taste of doing every little thing because there's just so much going on. You've got people going this way and that way and over here and over there and over this way. and You know, it's so easy to get lost and there's just so much going on all at the same time. It's a huge event and it's a lot of fun. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this here. This is my overview. And like I said, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing little, like a few little videos throughout the week Day one, day two, and day three, kind of behind the scenes and pictures and clips and, of course, the music and the bands and the stuff we got to see. So you guys would get to see it from my perspective and Big Bird's perspective and the kind of crap that we got up to and all the fun that we had. And I'll be posting it throughout the week, you know, day one, day two, day three. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Also... I've got some uh, some posters now for sale. I know there's been some people asking about posters, so I got a couple of posters up for sale. Go give it a click. Links will be in the description below. Also got new t-shirts for sale, so if you guys want to get some cool new merch and t-shirts, support the channel. Links are in the description below. It's always much appreciated. It helps the channel grow and keeps things moving forward. Whoo! Holy hell. All right. Now I'm going to have a hell of a time editing, editing, editing this all together. So I'm going to go ahead and stop talking now and uh, get to work so I can get this damn thing uploaded. I'm still very frazzled and trying to make everything happen. So if you don't know, get a clue, get a brew, get a rock and roll tattoo. Hang loose and be safe. I will see you in the next one. Madman out.